I usually start with a sip of coffee. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here with Joe Kime today. So, Joe, it's been, I think it was 2014, I finally decided I needed to come see Joe Kime. <laughs> Way back somewhere, I don't remember, seems like it was 20 years ago or more, my dad brought home from a, a conference a little card, Mission to Amish People. And I had that card for a long time because he was like, you would like this guy. And I kept looking at the card thinking, who does this kind of thing? Who has a mission to Amish people? Like, <laughs> <laughs> not too many out there. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. So it was a blessing 20, in 2014 when we met. And so it's, yeah. thanks for showing me the place today over there. I'm actually drinking coffee from Beyond Measure Market. <laughs> But I have it in my uh, in my mug, and I gave him a mug too. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I I have watched your videos, Joseph. Never dreamed that one day I would be invited to be part of, <laughs> of the, the coffee talk. Yeah, the coffee talk. I, I I'm really honored to to be part of this. Yeah. Well, I'm mm. glad. I I was thinking it's Tuesday. I need to make it happen. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we figured out a way, even though I couldn't do it exactly live, I figured out a way to get it done. So Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things I've been thinking about a lot, and I, at church I've been preaching through this, um, uh, through Exodus. And so there's this, in Exodus you have the, the, the thing with the, the children of Israel leaving Egypt, but only like two that left Egypt is what it seems like. Of the, I guess they were above a certain age. Only those two actually make it into the promised land. And so I preached a sermon a couple weeks ago where I said that um, leaving Egypt is not the same as arriving in the promised land. Mm -hmm. And I, when I was driving today, I was thinking about you and, and uh, I was thinking about people who get, who find out something about the Amish and suddenly are like, oh, let's get people out of the Amish. And, and, uh, and I thought, for Joe Kime, I think the way you should say this is like, leaving the Amish is not the same as getting saved or, <laughs> yeah. or, or something like that. Like the, the main goal isn't just get, let's get them out. It was, yeah. there's, there's, uh, they need to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I'll just introduce this thought and see if you have anything <laughs> that well, comes to mind when you think about this. Well, I think the first thing I'd like to go back to where you mentioned only two actually got to go into the promised <laughs> land out of the hundreds of thousands, right? Right, right. Uh, it's a little scary, and I know sometimes we, we, we I mean for myself, there yeah. was that point where I thought, okay, leaving Egypt and going into the wilderness was like getting saved, you know, got, went through, uh, was it the Red Sea that yeah, parted? Yeah, the Red Sea that parted, yeah. And so that may have been the salvation and then it's the journey to heaven and then only two ended up going there and is that the remnant you know yeah. would the remnant really be that small and yeah. you know those thoughts right. are going through my right. mind and if you think that that's pretty terrifying that, that's odds terrifying. <laughs> and when i think about myself and you know the the struggles I go through, the mental and, uh, you know, the things you mm -hmm. think about, you know, you're, you, 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 in spite of believing and remembering the day that I was born again, mm -hmm. there are those times when you're like, wow, Lord, you, you, you wouldn't want me, you know, mm. you know what goes through my yeah. mind. <laughs> uh, uh, but, um, <clears throat> but either way, that just kind of came to my mind. Right. And, well, but, but I think it's, on one hand side, it's, it's good to have a little bit of that question of like mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. and how because it reminds me I'm not. It wasn't my idea. Mm -hmm. Like and, and and I think in the in the Egyptian the the Exodus is a prime example of this. All those people that were sitting there, it wasn't their idea for mm -hmm. God to rescue them. They were kind of like, really, you're rescuing me? I don't want to leave the flesh pots of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And a few people got the vision and said, oh. Dear, you're right, there is a prophetic word that we're not supposed to be here forever, mm -hmm. and we're supposed to be over there. That'll be way better. Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes for myself, is if I just think of my own comfort or just who I want to be, then sure, I'd be comfortable in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But when I get a glimpse of what Christ has done and what he wants to do, then I'm, I'm not comfortable in Egypt anymore. Mm -hmm. I think we can get, uh, regardless of where we're at in life, we sometimes tend to think that this is just the way life is. I yeah. just need to accept it. And you'd almost think that maybe that happened to uh, the Israelites. Yeah. You know, there were those that maybe said, hey, you know what? You know, this is just the way it's been. Uh, yeah. why, why do you want to yeah. disrupt us right. now? And I, I, I know what you're talking about. And when you tried to tell me about mm -hmm. what the promised land is like and all that, but I don't know anything else but this. Yeah. And so you just kind of settle for so much less, yeah. right? Well, and then you get to the point where you send the spies in and they come back and there's, there's, they bring back the, the grapes. And, the, mm -hmm. and I always thought about, you know, the two men carrying a bunch of grapes. Like, it's mm -hmm. a big bunch of grapes mm -hmm. if it takes two men. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yet, and then Joshua and Caleb say, yeah, we can do this. And all the others are like, oh, before we go, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard. Uh, there's giants over there. Mm -hmm. And so I think about that, like, because you, you had a definite time in your life where you responded to following God's call. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a picture of the promised land for us on earth. Because I think there's probably several layers to this, mm -hmm. to, sure. the, to the allegory, right? Yeah. Um, and on one hand side, I want to walk in the promise of what God has called me to. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, it is, it is sometimes a hard mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. and, but there's always somebody that comes kind of with their tail tucked between their legs and comes running back and says, don't go that way, mm -hmm. it's bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're like, but I think God called me that way. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm even just getting ready to leave with the RV and everyone's like, you know what gas prices are like? And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm actually doing this because I think God wants me to do it. Mm -hmm. So if he can provide for me on a cheap gas day, he can provide mm -hmm. for me on an expensive gas day. I just need to make sure I'm actually hearing from him. Mm -hmm. that, that's a very good point. <laughs> and, and I think some of that happens as you mature in your faith. Mm -hmm. And you may not have taken a big leap the first time, but you took a baby step and, and you realize, hey, God provided. Yeah. And yeah. then you take another one. Yes. And then, you know, your, your faith increases and, yes. and you look back. Yeah. So, so this... It reminds me because I did take what now feel like baby steps, right? Mm -hmm. That were just impossibilities. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I think this is what God wants me to do. And so I take off and go do those. And, and after we were married, I was trying to explain to Stacy how, how many ways God had answered him. And she was sitting there and I could tell she wasn't being impressed. And I finally said, what? And she says, all I'm hearing is how irresponsible you were. <laughs> 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 you, she was like, you couldn't even pay your own way yeah. to go. To, and I'm like, that's not the, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yet I realized she has a point because mm -hmm. I live in a country where I have so much opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so I thought about that many times since then where you'll have someone who says, I want to live by faith. And the next mm -hmm. thing you know, they can't pay their phone bill. They can't pay their insurance. They can't mm -hmm. buy gas for the car. They're losing their house, mm -hmm. but they want to live by faith. And you say, well, living by faith is not a static thing. It usually means going to something. Mm -hmm. So you're actually, you have a mission. Mm -hmm. And see, I can believe God all day long if he has called me to do something and I'm on my way to do that. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just believing God so I can sit here in comfort and have my air conditioning and have my coffee and mm -hmm. just be comfortable, and, and I just think he's going to provide for me for the rest of my days. Well, that's a different thing. It's not quite mm -hmm. the same because mm -hmm. uh, God wasn't saying to the, Egypt, to, to the Israelites in Egypt, I want to take care of you. Mm -hmm. So just stay where you are. Mm -hmm. Make yourselves comfortable. I'm going to take care of you. Now he was like, I want you to be my people. So come out. Mm -hmm. Move. Mm -hmm. Change. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times our first thoughts of living by faith are not always fully formed mm -hmm. and we don't understand the amount of discipline 
and self-control and daily hard work that is involved with living by faith? Joseph, the, uh, <laughs> the more I hear you talk, the more I can't help but think of, you know, we talked earlier uh, when we were talking about how the New Beginnings and the Ball yeah. Food Store came together and right. it just kind of came together like that and you had people that threw money at yeah. you and large sums and and it was almost like immediately you knew God was doing something. Yes. And then my human side would think that, well, if God is in it and if God is calling and leading, it's just going to go gonna smoothly. Be and easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not necessarily the case, right? right? Right. Even if God is in it, it doesn't mean it's going to go smooth. Right. It just means that if God is in it, you're in it together. Mm -hmm. And He's when you go into the valleys and when it gets challenging and you almost wonder, you know, I've, I've said this, was God really in it back then? Yeah. Mm. And, 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 you know, thinking about the children of Israel, you know, I can just imagine Moses coming to them and say, hey, you know, after all these plagues, you know, yeah. you get it? Yeah, God is in it. And then the waters open up and, okay, there's another miracle and God must be in it. And then, then the struggles. Yeah. And I, I agree with you so much. I, I have met, I've worked with people who said, well, you know, I, used, I just got tired of just the, the daily wear of just providing for my family. I, I wanted to do something for God. And so then we start, we're doing something and after a while they're like, this is, I don't think we're doing it right. And I said, well, why not? And, it's, and, and the basically comes down to because if I'm serving God, it's gonna be easy, right? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no, actually, sometimes he calls us to come and die. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, the cost of discipleship. We mm -hmm. And it's a cost because if you look at the children of Israel, they get over to the promised land. And even when they get to the promised land, it's not God opening it. And you, know, you have the, uh, the, the captain of the Lord's host that shows up there and says, and Joshua asks him, are you for us or against us? And he says, no, but I am the captain of, you know, and, and you realize, okay, God is with them and he's going before them, but they still have to strap on their swords and go into battle mm -hmm. in the promised land. Mm -hmm. And they still have to, like even with Jericho where it c collapses inward, they still have to march seven times and blow their trumpets and mm -hmm. they still have to do their part. And I think this is the, the, the aspect of like when we are saved, if all God wanted was just to get us saved, you know, pay the price, get us saved, he would just zap us to heaven mm -hmm. that moment and mm -hmm. we'd be with him forever. But there's something else he's wanting to do. And that's the, the part that I always have to remind myself is there is, there is something that God is doing mm -hmm. that's bigger than mm -hmm. just my comfort. Mm -hmm. And he is totally okay with leading me through. And he is the path, he is the shepherd, he is the captain, mm -hmm. he's going with me, he's gonna be with me to the mm -hmm. end of the age, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. But he's gonna walk me through this mm -hmm. and it's gonna be dark valleys sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, which, when you think about Abraham, <clears throat> When uh, Abraham went uh, down into Egypt, you know, took a little detour. Yeah. I always think that, that that's kind of how it describes us maybe. Yeah. Uh, there are those times we take little detours and we may have almost kind of gotten out of God's will yeah. leading, but God will bring us back and yep. we'll continue the journey. Yeah. And, um, and, and I think too, you know, I love it because we can look back at Abraham and, and, you know, we can form our own opinions about him and say, well, I think this and that. And then you get to Hebrews and, and we get God's perspective on who Abraham was mm -hmm. and the faith that he had. And, and, and you're, it's amazing when you stop and look at it. And I love Abraham for the reason that I look at him like he wavered. Mm -hmm. And Hebrews says he didn't waver. <laughs> 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 and I, and I, I'm like, okay. But I saw him waver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he he went and 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 there was Hagar and there was he didn't just go straight. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh well, that's actually also my path. Is mm -hmm. I, I get the word from God and then I'm like, mm -hmm. beep, beep. and and in the end I get where I'm supposed to be. But in my humanity, and and 
because it's not truly just my performance that's at stake here. My performance is not winning me the place, but it's my position in Christ that allows me to walk with Him. Mm -hmm. So it gives me the privilege to perform, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I get to walk on the journey because of my position, not winning my position because of my mm -hmm. journey, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I always think about, it says, Abraham did not waver at the promise. I'm like, but he did. <laughs> he really did. Yeah. <laughs> Just like us, right? Just like us. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That makes us, that should make us a little bit less stressed out, it right? Should. When we it mess should. up, you know, yeah. it's like, and Abraham was God's friend. Yeah. God said, he's He my, did. And, and, I, and I think he should make us less stressed and let us yeah. be more like, all right, Lord, what are you doing? You knew from the beginning that I was this <laughs> lump of clay. <laughs> he's, not, he's not shocked. Yeah. He's like, no, I made you. I know every weakness you yeah, have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, well, I think when we are in this journey, there are those times when the closest thing to Jesus are of our best friends, mm -hmm. those who hung with us. Yeah. Uh, e even when y you wonder why they hung with you, they hung with you. Mm -hmm. Those were your, those are the people that help us get through. And that just happened to me, I think just this week, where we had a little situation going and some accusations, yeah. you know, come and, and I'm part of this texting group and about three or four of them immediately responded, hey, we're with you. And I thought, wow, that's such a wonderful feeling knowing mm -hmm that you have Jesus, but you have these friends mm -hmm. that stick with you. And, and um, I would imagine Joshua and Caleb would have had to have a very close relationship, Yeah, right? I, I think if you're gone that long with 12 people, it wasn't a shock and a surprise to Joshua and Caleb that the other 10 were the way they were. Mm -hmm. Like when they got back to camp, mm -hmm. it, it had to have been that the whole journey, they were going, the others were going, oh, no, you know, their language, their body mm -hmm. posture, mm -hmm. everything they said mm -hmm. probably was that whole doubting, the whole time, everything they saw. And Joshua and Caleb kept looking at each other going, but we can do this, God's on our side. Mm -hmm. And especially you think about Joshua having spent that so much time in the presence of God, mm -hmm. it says, Everyone else would leave the, you know, the, the tent of meeting and go back, and Joshua would stay there in the presence of the Lord. Wow. And just as a young man, before mm -hmm. this even happened, and so I knew he'd, you know, he spent, so they're, they're looking at it, they're seeing the hand of God, mm -hmm. and, and the others aren't. Mm -hmm. And that's so true of today, you know, you, mm -hmm. stuff happens, and you'll find a few people who are standing there going, wow. God is about to be glorified. This is mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And everyone else is going, whoa, it's us. We're going to yeah. die. You know? yeah. and, and, and you're like, no, see it the way God wants you to mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. But the, the, what you said earlier about the, you know, starting this, like having the idea mm -hmm. to get new beginnings going and, and the, the marketplace going, and, and you, have, you get the money for it, you draw up the plans. Well, drawing up the plans getting a name, registering the name with the state or whatever you do, you know, that is not the same as actually successfully running mm -hmm. the place. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> we, you know, we can yeah. put together ideas and, yes. and make plans. Yeah. And so I, I think about that, like, just, and, and I have often thought, well, if I could just get so-and-so to have a, a ministry, then they would straighten out and fly right with God. Mm -hmm. But maybe not, because I was connected to my king first, and he was the one who led me to the ministry. My ministry did not lead me mm, to him. Mm -hmm. And so just the process of leaving mm -hmm. Egypt, like we say, well, if you had only had a Red Sea experience, mm -hmm. then you'll believe. Mm -hmm. They didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, they had, a, I mean, even beyond that, when you think about the man and the, the quail and the. Yeah. The light by night and the, you know, the fire by night, yeah. and cloud by day, and you know when you think about all those things, and they still, yeah, they still spalter. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then you bring it forward to us, and we have the spirit of the living God within mm -hmm. us. That's good. I'm not even looking over there to mm -hmm. see the cloud or the mm -hmm. pillar. He's here, mm -hmm. and then I'm. 
I'm so, still a sheep. <laughs> yeah, so just hearing you say that makes me wonder what the difference, if, if, if obviously you could have felt the difference, whether you were on the outside looking at mm. God, mm -hmm. you know, move, or now he's on the inside yeah. of us. How, what's, is there like a difference that a person would feel? Like, are, do well, we take for granted? Okay, so we pray, like, Lord, be present with us for this meeting, you know, when we're having revival meetings or just a church meeting. We'll ask for God's presence while we actually believe that He is omnipresent, mm -hmm. that He's everywhere, and yet we'll pray for Him to be, to oh, come. Yeah. We'll ask Him to be with us. Mm -hmm. He is with us, mm -hmm. and so like mm -hmm. I, you know, I've heard people say, "Stop asking God to be with you. Just thank Him that He's thank Him for being with you." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I think what I mean is, I need a hug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to sense your presence, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm asking for something more than what is the ordinary. Mm -hmm. And so if you think of the, I think of the fact that Joshua would stay and would not leave the tent of meeting. That meant that there was something he was feeling with God mm -hmm. there that he was not feeling mm -hmm. back at his tent. Wow. And so I sometimes mm -hmm. think that even though we have a spiritual, doctrinal truth of God everywhere, we have a practical truth too because God told us, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. something that mm -hmm. is distance mm -hmm. and, and brings us closer mm -hmm. that we're looking for. And I know there's been times when I have sensed that God was using me. Mm -hmm. And there's other times where people came back later and said, thank you for what you shared or what you did that meant so much to me. And at the time I was doing it, I felt zero. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. fact, I might have had a headache and been tired, mm -hmm. just wished I could go home. Mm -hmm. And yet God was using it. Mm -hmm. And so I know there's times when it's way more awareness here mm -hmm. of what God is doing than others. And I'm not quite sure you know, I've, I've read books about people who had determined that they would never preach unless they sensed the presence of God. And, and I thought about that, and, and, and they literally wouldn't. They would show up and be like, I don't feel it here, and go home again, and mm -hmm. not even preach. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, so what am I trying to feel? Because mm -hmm. I can actually drink about three or four cups of coffee, and I'll start feeling something. Mm -hmm that makes me wonder, is the Holy Spirit about to move? Like, what is this? <laughs> so I don't know if that answers what you were uh, getting yeah, at, but like, no, it's just different it's, pieces of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I can surely relate with that as well. I, I remember of a time, the, the husband had died of cancer and then the, the mother uh, was in a car accident mm. and my wife and I just really felt led to go and visit her okay. even though she was a uh, Schwarzentruber Amish. Mm. And we came to church here, uh, attended church service and then right after service we went to the house. Yeah. And I began to just share the gospel with her. She was in a hospital bed okay. at her, um, you know, in in her home okay. and so as we were sharing the gospel all these Amish people started coming in and, and um, I would get interrupted and I'd stop and then I'd start up again and yeah. then more Amish people came in and and I remember being so tensed up I didn't know whether to stop or keep going and, <laughs> right. and but I was there I felt God wanted me there and I remember just kind of scooting out of there and thinking wow what was that all about like all like, the interruptions yeah all those in, uh, li literally yeah. Joseph at the end uh, the whole living room was full of Amish people if I remember 20 20 Amish people sitting mm -hmm. there <laughs> and you know that's why your card says missionary to Amish people <laughs> <laughs> well you do these kind of things <laughs> I do these kind of things yeah but I I wouldn't know until 15 years later mm -hmm. that while I was sharing the gospel this little girl out in the kitchen was mm. listening and she told me I did this wedding and had quite a few of the Amish from yeah. my community there uh, that just kind of showed up. It was a half Amish, half English okay. kind of thing. <laughs> and this girl came up, she was very timid, and she said, do you remember coming to my mom's house? And 
She goes, I was this little girl in the kitchen and I was just glued on what you were saying. <laughs> I was like, Lord, it took you 15 years to tell me mm -hmm. what that was all about. Yeah. But yeah. There was a little girl in the kitchen that was yeah. like, here comes some more people. They're interrupting him again. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he doesn't quit. Yeah. You're right. right. And, and wow. Then, um, I just, uh, I, I think, I think, you know, we don't have to really know what it was all yeah. about. We may not right. know until we die and stand before God. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we, some people say, well, you won't care at that point yeah. whether, you know. I just always have to figure there's tears in there for some reason, so <laughs> I, I might care for just a moment while God shows me what could have been. But, yeah. but at the same time, that relaxation of realizing that he's got it is so important because if the children of Israel at that point would have been able to say, wow, look at those grapes. You say God's got this? Well, let's go. Mm -hmm. And they could have just, but they were thinking, how are we gonna do this? Mm -hmm. And they were trying to figure it out and they couldn't figure it out because it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the thing too. It's like, if I walk into that room mm -hmm. and everyone's, you know, she's sitting there or whatever, you know, in the hospital bed, I'm kind of hoping that like you'll hear angels sing quietly, maybe a little, you know, everything is real quiet and there's, there's this holy silence and I just speak the words and mm -hmm. But that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. There were interruptions, all this other stuff is happening, but it's still God. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a huge part of our journey is to recognize that just because we have the idea, that's not the same as actually doing it. Mm -hmm. We have to walk it out and sometimes when we're walking it out, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So, and that and yeah. that why he says, uh, how's the scripture say? Um, uh, for lack of better words, welcome, faithful servant. Uh, how oh, yeah, that, that well done, good and well, faithful servant. Yeah, well yeah. done. Yeah, thou good and faithful servant. I, I, you know, those are going to be some precious mm -hmm. words. Yeah, those are, and because it's, it's it has to do with the following, mm -hmm. and it, we did. I still remember responding the very first time and really feeling peace with God for the first time. And I still remember sensing that God was calling me. Mm -hmm. But the amount of, I don't know how to say it quite, but like the level of spiritual experience that was to have know that God is calling me mm -hmm. and obey that, that was great, it was awesome. But it was nothing like the years mm -hmm. of walking it out. Mm -hmm. And at the time, like, and, and I think about this, you know, we get all emotional about the call. We get, mm -hmm. because it's, it is, it's amazing when mm -hmm. God, when you sense that God is tapping you on the shoulder mm -hmm. saying, you follow me, we're mm -hmm. like, me? I can, and we, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's the whole leaving Egypt thing. And then, mm -hmm. then we follow him. Mm -hmm. And he takes us all kinds of places. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I don't know that, you, do you feel like you're in the promised land when you're the, <laughs> working down there I don't the, know. in the Beyond Measure Market? It, it depends on where I got my eyes on. If I got them on Jesus, I know I'm on track. But boy. <laughs> There's days, you're like, There's days. is this the promised land? <laughs> yeah, is this really God's calling? Wow. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But perseverance mm -hmm. and endurance. Yeah. And, and you know, as we get older, I think the endurance, the perseverance, the faithfulness of others mm -hmm. are so valuable. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, because it's, it's, it's only a few that really, you know, compared to the whole, that they stick in there and they go, and regardless of what comes their way, mm -hmm. they stick in there. They got their eyes on Christ. And uh, boy, is that a valuable... Um, yeah. yeah. Amen. Is that valuable? That it's, is so it's precious. So, yeah. yeah. I'm even thinking of donors who mm -hmm. have through the years, you know, difficulties and continued and just so precious. Yeah. So precious. Yeah. That's a good word. It's the, the endurance. And mm -hmm. I guess we're, we're getting close to 30 minutes there. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for joining me today. And it's an honor. And sharing. 30 minutes goes by fast when it you're does. talking with a friend. <laughs> it does. And, and, and you have the same, you right. know, things yes. you enjoy yes. about life. And, yep. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, well, thank you for joining me and 
we'll see you <laughs> next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah.